So thank you for clicking into this video. And today I just got me some Mike's seafood. I got some potatoes. I got some crawfish tail rice. And I got some wings. And since I'm eating Mike's, since I'm eating Mike's, it only makes it right to have a Mike's lemonade. So yeah, y'all, let me tell y'all about the time that I almost died in my car. So I was on my way to work one day, and mind you, I've been had the car since I had graduated college. It was a gift to me. And I was just driving to work one day, y'all. Like, I was driving to work, and my car was on fire. And I didn't even know. The people was passing me up and honking their horns and stuff. And nobody ever turned around to see, you know, if I was good. I was actually on my way to work. Um, and my car had just started, it had caught fire on the bottom. And how was I supposed to know the car was on fire at the bottom? If I'm in it and I can't see the smoke, I can't see no flames, I couldn't see nothing. And so I was just driving to work, y'all. Normally driving. You know, my regular routine on my way to work. And my car just start going on fire. And I'm going to show y'all. Like, I'm going to insert a picture over here. Like, look over here. And I'm going to show you. So, when I made it to work, y'all, I was so scared. Like, I was literally driving the car had. I had knew something was wrong because people was kept on honking their horns at me and stuff. But nobody ever came back. And the crazy thing about it is... My boss was actually behind me, but he had kept like a good distance from me and he was honking his horn and then I was panicking because my car, like, you know, if your car on fire, everything under the engine about to go berserk. Like, I couldn't steer the car, I couldn't move the car, I couldn't brake, I couldn't put the car in park, I couldn't do nothing. So finally, it just so happened that I had my window cracked on the driver's side and I couldn't let it down. So I was trying to pull it down while the car was, you know, taking its course. Everything on the dash was flashing. Everything was like coming apart. And I was like, oh my God, like, God, is this my time? Is this my time to go? Like, please get me up out of here. Like, I started praying and I was screaming. And then I didn't want to call nobody until I got out the car because I wasn't sure if I was going to get out. And my natural instinct just had me, you know, get out the car first and then call somebody. So my boss, he was behind me and he was driving real slow. And I was like, how the hell did my car catch on fire? So I'm just driving and driving and driving, thinking the car was going to let me get out of it. But it didn't. Like, the door started locking. The steering wheel started locking up. The pedals wouldn't move the car. I couldn't brake. I couldn't change the ignition. Y'all, I was so scared. Like, I was so scared. Like, that shit still give me sweats when I talk about it. Because I was so scared. Like, I literally was about to almost lose my life. And so... When I finally got out the car, y'all, the way I got out the car was I let the car, you know, drive itself like the car on, on in flames in my trunk and I could see it in the review. So I'm thinking every kind of way to get out the car, the doors locked up on me, everything locked up. And so when I finally was able to get the strength and trying not to panic, I grabbed my lunch kit and I grabbed my wallet and I kind of put it by my feet and then I started kicking the door like I had to kick the shit out the door, y'all. And I kicked it and I kept kicking it until it just flew off. And then I'm gonna insert a picture to where you can see where I put the dent in the door from kicking it to get out. But when I got out, the car was like at five miles per hour and I had jumped out the car and rolled on the ground. And I remember my boss coming up to me, asking me if I was okay. And I was like, yes, and I was crying. And I was literally looking on the side, like trying to hit myself in the head because I thought I was dreaming, but my car was just right there going up in the flames. And so he advised me, you know, the safest thing to do is get away from the car because we don't know if it's going to blow. And the first thing he asked me, he was like, you got gas in there? I was like, yeah, I got a full tank of unleaded plus in there. And he was like, oh, it's going to go. It's going to go. We got to get back. And so we finally get back. I grabbed my lunch kit. I grabbed my phone. And 
I couldn't, I didn't even want to go get nothing else out the car. I was just like, whatever, it ain't nothing but material stuff. And so I called my mom and I was like, mom, my car on fire. And I called my granny. I called everybody, y'all. I was so scared and I was crying. I was like, why did this happen to me? Like, how did this happen? And so fast forward to, you know, the car, the people who make my car, I got in contact with them after they had picked up, you know, the news article about my car catching on fire due to a recall. And so, you know, they was going to give me a settlement or whatever. And I was just expressing to them, like, this car was a gift to me for graduating college. It's paid off. I was like, I don't know what to do. And then on top of that, I had lost my job. Well, I had lost, you know, my intern like two weeks after my car caught on fire because I was having trouble getting to and from work. And so, I feel... Mm. Kia picked up the newspaper article and they were like, we're going to pay you for this. I'm sorry that we didn't send you anything in the mail about the recall that we could have prevented this problem. And I was just expressing to him like I was so scared, y'all. And this guy, he was the head. He was like one of the higher heads of, you know, the Kia dealership in California where they where their big corporate office is. And I was his name was Samuel Kim. I'll never forget. He was a good, he gave me good customer service. And I had never been on an accident. So I really didn't know like how long the process would be, but he stayed in contact with me. He made sure he took care of everything. He sent, you know, the adjuster and everything away. He flew somebody way from their headquarters to Texas to look at my car to see if that was what really happened. And so they determined it and they gave me a settlement or whatever. They basically just gave me what the car was worth um, and it was paid off, it was brand new. Um, and they reimbursed me for the loss. But girl, yeah, I was so scared. It was like a movie. And I remember like the weeks after my car had caught on fire, everybody in my job, all my coworkers, they were like, you know, some of them, they were kind of joking about it. And then others, you know, they were really concerned. And then they were like, you made a historical mark on the road. We can still see the burn patch on the road. And I was like, I'm just grateful to be alive. Like, I wasn't even worried about nothing that I had lost in the car. Like, my work stuff, I had lost that. I had lost, um, I had lost, no, I couldn't remember what all was in my car because I hardly keep things in my car that are important. But, yeah, I almost died. And then, after the people told me what the issue was, I had done some research and stuff, and I had seen like a bunch of other people cars do the same thing, and it was reported on the news and everything, but the manufacturer never did nothing about it, so I thank God that my car was the year model and make that it was, because the people who had the previous experiences, they had did so many lawsuits to where they wouldn't turn around, they wouldn't turn me away, you know, with my problem considering being that it was a recall on the damn car. Like, I was so scared, child. Like, I literally thought I was going to die today. And my natural instinct, I just started praying. I was like, God, please give me a way to get out this car. The car just burning up in flames on the bottom. And I'm seeing the flames in the, in the trunk, and I can't even do nothing to put it out. I was so scared. And, like, when I went to go talk to, like, the news reporters and stuff, well, they had asked me. They had asked me a bunch of questions, and I was like, I couldn't really talk. Like I couldn't, cause I just seen my car like that. It just when I got out the car, I just kept seeing it repeatedly happen over my head, over and over again. So I had took some days off work, and I had, you know, had been in contact with you know, lawyers and stuff like that. And then the Kia people finally picked it up. 
because they had got the newspaper article and I was scared y'all. Like, I really, really thought I was gonna die. And my mama was like, when my mama came to the scene, she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This looks like a movie. And I was like, mama. And I was crying y'all. Like I had to cry in front of my coworkers. Like, it was just life changing. And I, and I really, um, I really liked my car. Like I had had it for a good amount of time and I kept up like all the maintenance and everything that you would normally keep up on a car. So for it to catch on fire, I was like, what the heck? It has to be something wrong. And then with it not coming from the front, with it coming from the gas line, I was like, well, nah, I don't never do no maintenance back there. So that can't be my fault for that it caught on fire. I was scared, y'all. Um, like, I was scared. And I had told my mom, I was like, I'm glad that you came because when the ambulance came, I was hyperventilating. They had to give me a breathing treatment because I was like shortness of breath. Yeah, I was so scared. But I, I have never been in an accident. Like, I've never been in a live fire. Like, that shit right like, there was life changing. And I feel like I'm very pleased with my settlement because I could have died and no no amount of money can take death away from you. That's why I was just grateful with the settlement. I didn't try to fight with them and then I was just settled, like sold, okay? Because for one, I knew I wasn't finna get in another car by that, that by that same manufacturer. I love my little Kia Soul. I love it. But they had all them kind of problems. I told my mama, I was like, I'm not finna go refinance with them because at first they wanted me to just refinance with them and get another car through the dealership. And I was like, nah, I was like, y'all can just give me the cash. Tell me, I don't want no cars from y'all dealership. I don't even want no car that's made by y'all at this point because I almost died. Like, you really gonna try to persuade me to get another car? I was like, no. And so I took the settlement. I got me a new car and it took me some time to get back in the car, y'all, because I was so scared. And now, like, when I drive, I make sure I take all the precautions that I need. I crank my car. I let it run for a little bit. And if any lights come on on the dash, I automatically pop that hood and check them fluids, see if everything is okay, because I don't want to experience another car fire. Like, I thought I was going to die. Like, I was so scared, but the people were really nice. You know, the emergency responders, when they came to the scene and stuff, the firefighters were nice. They were super concerned and they got the fire out within I want to say like 10 or 20 minutes because the car by the time they had got there the car was already black burnt uh, ashes I was like it took y'all long enough to get here <laughs> and where I was in the car I was gonna die but it was all right gave me the strength it gave my legs the strength to get the fuck out that car because I kicked the hell out of that door. Excuse my language, y'all, but I was so scared. But I kicked that door so hard, I kicked, I kicked it off the hinges. And I, I, you can see in that picture that when I kicked off the hinges, I put a whole dent in the frame of the, of the door. And you know, the sheriff's office, that was like... The sheriff officers was like, so are you okay? And blah, 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 because I was in I was in the ambulance. And they was like, we know you got breathing treatment and everything. I was like, I'm okay. I'm not going to fake and say that I'm hurting and I'm not hurting because I'm not right now. And then I just told them, I was like, I'm fine. I'm just grateful to be alive. And I was crying. And the officers were really nice to me. They were really sweet. And... I was just like, man, and they comforted me until my mom came to the scene. So I was trying to get myself together before she got there because I know if I was gonna be crying and all that, 
she was going to eventually cry with me and I don't want to do that and I don't want to stress out. I just wanted her to know that I was okay and this has happened and we can't do nothing about it, but I'm just grateful to be alive because I was really scared. Like I never in a million years experienced a fire, let alone I have never been close to in a wreck. So that was really my first accident and I thank God for the experience because now I'm more precautious about my car when I buy one. I'm precautious about the make. I make sure I keep everything, you know, up to maintenance on it because I don't want to experience that again. Like, I was scared. And then, the next day after it, like, I couldn't sleep. I'm telling you, when that car went up in them flames and I seen them flames in my trunk, every time I tried to go to sleep, I just seen them flames in the rearview mirror and from when I was laying on the ground. I was so scared, like, I couldn't even, I can't even tell you or describe the pain that I was feeling and the trauma that I had to deal with weeks after it had happened, like, that's what I'm saying. You got to be humble because, man, God can spare my life. That's the second major time that God has really spared my life. And I'm grateful because, baby, if I would have had to burn, oh, my God. Oh, if I would have had to burn and feel myself die slow, oh, my God. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me because that right there was a life changer. Like, mm -hmm. a true life changer. And I had to pull through. And my brothers and everybody was calling me, like all my family and stuff was calling me. You know, checking on me to see if I was okay. And it was kind of hard to talk about because it would always struck a nerve and I'd always tear up and cry because I was like, I almost died. Like, just almost could have died. Thanks to Kia Motors. I was like, man. I'm never buying another kid again. They got nice cars, cars ride super good. But baby, I would never want to be in a live car fire. I, like, I, won't, I don't ever want to experience that again. And God will it, I don't because I'm gonna know what to do, but I'm just scared. Cause that, that, that took me, that took me bird, baby, because mm -mm, like I almost died and I was scared. I was so scared. Like the next few days going to work, having to drive past it, man. I had to, I had to get carpooled to work after a few days because I couldn't almost every time, like I had started calling in because I didn't want to pass up where the car had caught on fire in my mom's car. I was like, nah, I can't do this. So, I had got one of my coworkers. I had to start carpooling with them, and it was a lot for me, like to even pass up the location where the car had left the burn mark in the road. Like I was so scared. And I'm just grateful to be alive. That's why every day I wake up, and every time I go somewhere and make it back home, I'll be thanking God because traveling grace and. Wearing my life while I'm in the car, cause after that experience, I'm telling you, it was a lot. It was a lot for me. Like, I would never wish that on anybody. And if anybody has died from this, may they rest in peace. And anybody that's made it out, we are some true soldiers because I was scared. And that car was going up in the flames and I couldn't even I just couldn't, y'all. Like, my hands started shaking and stuff when I didn't have no control on the car. Man, 
My hair started shaking. I was breaking out in sweats. I was crying. Like my head was pumping. My adrenaline was pumping. I was like, I was like, God, I just started praying. I was like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. I can't steer the car. I can't push the brakes. I can't move the ignition. I can't open the door, down doors and windows locked. I was scared, y'all. Like, I was really scared. And I was telling myself, like, man, I'm going to make it through this. I'm strong. I'm important. I'm going to be somebody. And I was like, God, please let me get out. I said, God, make a way for me to get out this car. Please give me the strength to get out this car. And just like God always coming through for me, he gave me the strength. I was, I was scared, baby. Like, that shit right there changed my life. My whole trajectory and outlook on life, like, it changed my life. And I just, mm -mm. Have you ever been in an accident? And if so, what effect did it take on your life? And what did you learn from it? Let me know in the comments. And I'm just about done with this food, y'all. I can't eat anymore, but this is for Mike's seafood. Like five minutes from my house. But I definitely want to get on here and talk to y'all. Um, so y'all can know a little bit more about me. I know y'all don't always want to know about what a person does as a YouTuber. Y'all actually <laughs> want to know the person or at least feel like you know the person. But that right there, I just had to share with y'all because you may know someone who's been in an accident. And I kid you not, that right there changed my life. Like, it changed my life. So I'm done with all this food. Like, I can't eat all this. So I'm just going to save the potato and the rice. And the rest of those things. The wings is pretty big. And they good. Look at my stomach. <laughs> like, I can't eat all this. Can y'all believe that all this food was only $13? 10 garlic parmesan wings, small crawfish rice with three potatoes, $13. <laughs> and no, it's not because of quarantine, because I always eat at Mike's. So I'm very familiar with the prices, but y'all, I just have to share that with y'all. If you ever been in an accident and it changed your life and it spared your life and you feel like you were strong enough and you still strong for making it out of it and surviving because girl when I tell you I was scared scared of the word I was traumatized and the way that I had to express that to you know the Kia representatives it was just it started getting on my nerves after a while because I was like so irritated and sad at the same time and I had to keep telling the story over and over and over again. I was like, man, why are they making me say this over and over and over and over? And I'm sitting up here telling y'all, y'all see the newspaper. I'm telling y'all the same thing that happened at the scene. And so verify what's in the newspaper, the police did. Told y'all. But it was a lot for me, y'all, and I was really, really, really scared, and I didn't want to just lose myself right there in that moment, I was trying to take deep breaths, because I knew the ambulance was on the way, but I was already at the shortest of breath, because I was laying on the ground, and when I jumped out the car, like, I hit the, I hit the ground pretty hard, and I was... Like, I hit the ground pretty hard, and then, like, when people started coming, this lady, she actually stopped, and I think she was under the influence or something, because she was talking kind of crazy, because I kept trying to go back up to my car, and she was like, don't go, don't go, and then here she come with a cup of water, throwing it under the car, like, but you just told me not to go up to the car, like, I was so scared, like, I was so scared and I couldn't really you know I was trying to compose myself because I was scared 
but at the same time, I knew that I had made it out the car and I had to kept, I kept telling myself, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay because God allowed me to get out the car. Child, my family, I'm sick. I would never forget that. I'll never forget you know, how it happened to me. I'll never forget how God had me straight to get out of there. So, I was so scared, and I couldn't even describe it at first, but a little bit over time, like, when I started talking, like, to lawyers and to, like, the newspaper and the sheriff and stuff, it kind of all came back to me as if I had did it all over again. In some kind of way, God gave me the confidence and the strength to talk about it all over again. Like, I couldn't imagine getting out of the car. Like, I know the effect it had on me from trying to stay, you know, from trying, from getting out of the car, but I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful that I made it out because I was so scared. I'm going to eat some yogurt, y'all. I love strawberry yogurt. Like, I love it. And I never finish these. That's how you know I'm not a real drinker. <laughs> like, I never finish these. If you ever been in an accident, what did you learn from it and how did it change your life? Let me know in the comments. If you've ever been in a live fire, if you ever been like if you ever been in a situation similar to mine, like a house fire, any kind of fire, or just a car accident in general, let me know in the comments. Because I kid you not, if you made it through that, if nobody has told you and people has been being negative about the situation, I'm gonna be the first to tell you, you you strong. You are you are strong. If you made it out, and just know that you're strong, because you're strong if you made it out in a situation like that. So you know, everything happens for a reason, but when you make it out of bad situations, it's good in that. Because not only did something bad happen, but you made it out. That's how you know it happened for a perfect reason. And maybe it would have been, you know, some kind of reality check for you to know your own strength or just anything. It happened for a reason. So you can't dwell on what other people say. You just have to know that it happened for you because that's what God wants you to change for your life. But I see you not, you know. Never in a million years. I buy another car made by Tia. Customer service was great and everything about the situation, but as far as cars, getting another Tia car, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because, honey, I almost died on y'all cars, and I'd be damned if I buy another car from y'all. Whether it be a gift or whatever, I'm not buying another kid car. Because my cousin had told me before, because she had a kid car, a whole different make, and she was like, she was having some, you know, fire type of problems with her car. And I was like, man, I was like, for real? Because I had got my car as a gift, so I wasn't thinking nothing negative about it. Anything, anybody negative, anything anybody said about it. You know, the car maker, I was like, whatever, and whatever, and just rushing them off. And then when that happened to me, I, that, that was all the clarification I needed right there. Because I know I don't experience nothing like that ever again in my life. Like, I don't care how cute the car was. Maybe I almost died. So, like, I'm not against Kia. They have some pretty, you know, models and make some cars, but honey, I refuse. I refuse to spend another coin on the Kia. I refuse. I refuse, okay? Like, no. I refuse to. So if y'all don't know nothing about me, just know that I've been in live car fire. <laughs>
<laughs> so, if you don't know nothing about me, honey, just know that I am a car fire survivor. And I hope to see you in my next video. And thank you for tuning in. I'm going to finish cleaning up my kitchen. I'm going to sweep and then... I'm going to go make some more videos for you guys. See you in my next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with someone you think it may be useful to. Share with a friend. Tell that friend. Share with another friend. But thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you in my next one. And deuces, baby. Because I'm supposed to eat some of my yogurt mm. mm. y'all I don't know what it is but every time I eat seafood I have to go directly behind it and eat something sweet like every time it never fails I don't know if it be my taste buds acting a fool or I just need that taste out of my mouth you know, the seasoning of the seafood or whatever. But that always happens, like, always happens. And then what's crazy, when I finish eating the sweets, y'all, I be going to take, like, two shots of apple cider vinegar. So, like, I don't know what the heck is going on with my taste buds. Like, they be all over the place. But sometimes, like, I'll eat once a day. And so I think when I eat, my taste buds just want me to make up for everything that I haven't been eating all throughout the day. And I can understand that taste bud. I can understand y'all. So yeah. But thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, boo. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and leave in the comments anything that you want to discuss about what happened to me or if you know someone that it happened to or even if it happened to you, let me know in the comments and be sure to share this video with someone you think it'll be useful to. But until next time, see you in my next one. Bye.